There, is everybody happy now? This video is brought to you by my awesome sponsors. Make sure to check out the affiliate links in the description below. Thanks again for all the support. Hello, my name is Matt and welcome to the channel. Of course, this is Need for Speed Unbound and this is my thought process on Need for Speed Unbound after six months. So in my mind, Need for Speed Unbound is the first game need that EA, I should say, has finally decided to make a live service game for the franchise. And it's quite evident that it's gone through some major kind of kinks to get to where it's at. And in all honesty, I don't feel like it's entirely there. But, I mean, they're kind of trying. <laughs> so with major uh, live service games, normally what happens is that they have some patches after every month or they have patches for you know, for example if we're looking at Forza or Gran Turismo they're normally patches every month and Need for Speed Unbound has had three major updates or patches in six or seven months now not ideal in my mind and these aren't even like major patches like the very first one was adding a couple of new cars the second one and the third one did start addressing some major bugs start addressing some you know for example link ups and link ups are definitely unique that's that's definitely for sure it, it definitely was not a type of game mode i was expecting in a way, link-ups are reminding me of some of the events that we've seen in Forza for a couple of years now. So it's interesting to see the Criterion's thought process on how all of that works. But it just does not seem like... It seems like that they're trying so many things. Like they're attempting to be like a live service game but they have had only a few updates and it's like well if you want to be a live service update game you want to have long-term plans which it doesn't seem like ea wants to have long-term plans with this game and it just doesn't feel like this game is still that polished even six seven months after the fact so in my mind, Criterion has made some pretty good strides in creating Need for Speed's first live service franchise. Ah, apart from Need for Speed World. <laughs> so with the addition of Speed Pass, it is making strides towards that kind of live service game. But with the EA executives at the helm, it, it just seems like that they always like to keep Need for Speed as a you buy it, once for $70, we have three, four, or five months of patches, and then we'll see you in two years. So I do definitely feel that there is a little bit of conflict between... There is a little bit of an internal conflict, because it appears that the executives are already kind of done with this game, considering that there's like zero marketing still. But the developers are actually going above and beyond and continuing to give some patches to this game, which I'm hoping to see a uh, Need for Speed Volume 4 eventually. An Unbound Volume 4, should I say? But it's anyone's guess at this point to, to see, because they said that they'd be putting out a roadmap, and they kind of never did, so hard telling at this point point. and speaking of criterion trying new things all in all this is one thing that has really struck me with this game is their attempt to try at least new artistic things and they added people to the world and they added like more collaborations with you know hip-hop and rap culture which i think was a really good move because that is kind of the quote-unquote the youth culture these days so to tap into that with ASAP Rocky and to tap into that with Palace, that uh, clothing brand and whatnot, I think, again, was a really good call to, to move in a new direction because if we go back, the, the golden crown of the entire franchise, Need for Speed Most Wanted, like was 
tapping into that new metal kind of gangster idea as well. So this this franchise has a tendency to go in a million different directions. And that's the one thing that I've struggled with the most is potentially the lack of identity. But that might actually be Need for Speed's identity where you've got Need for Speed Hot Pursuit where it's just you're having police chases in the middle of these canyons and whatnot, but then you've got Need for Speed to run, The Run, which was a story-driven game. And then you've got Unbound and Heat and Payback, which tapped into the tuner car culture in an open-world environment, I should say 2015 as well. I don't know. It's just, it's really interesting to see Criterion attempting to continue to make these new strides. But this open world kind of formula is also getting a little bit stale, where it's the idea of having the car customization in, in open world with cop chases. If their next game is going to be like that, then it'll be the past decade of, of straight games like that, because you've got... Need for Speed Hopper Suit wasn't... 2010 wasn't necessarily that. But most wanted 2012 was, Rivals 2013 was, 2015 was, Payback was, Heat was. So in my mind is if the franchise keeps going, they'll either need to keep on refining the open world car customization thing, but really take it in a new direction or drop it completely and go in off into left field again. But again, I'll... I'll take a step back and say I have enjoyed Criterion's attempts at taking a familiar idea and refining it further. I enjoyed the art style. I enjoyed the characters. I enjoyed having pedestrians around. So it definitely does feel like a more fleshed out world versus Heat, which was released during the pandemic. And Heat's world itself felt like that pan pandemic isolation feeling, emptiness. So, I like this. But six months after the fact, seven months after the fact, I just have this feeling of... wanting more from the franchise. Because again, like I've been saying, is if they go in the direction that they want to make this live service game, then they need to jump in head first and announce a roadmap saying that this is what we're going to do for the next year. But again, that, that communication from the marketing department is just not there. They'll let us know a week before an update comes out, and then they'll release a trailer for the update, and then they'll say, see you in two months, or maybe not. So do I enjoy Unbound? Yeah. I, I do enjoy this game. The issue that I've had, though, is... With the lack of people playing this game, because of the lack of marketing to even say that they were releasing the game, still irks me. I actually had my wife pick up this game for PlayStation 5, and I picked up a PlayStation 5 copy as well, and we played it all of once. And since then, we've talked about it, and she's like, nah, I don't really want to play it again. It just... So I don't know if it's... I, I'm more than a certain that it's the fact that she just doesn't like racing games all that much. That's a different idea. But at the same time, too, she played a lot of Need for Speed Heat, and I played a lot of Need for Speed Heat, and there are a lot of friends in my friend group that played Need for Speed Heat a lot. But as soon as Unbound came out, absolutely nobody knew slash cared about it. So I do feel Unbound, getting back to the topic, I do feel Unbound is a good game. I honestly do. There are a lot of new attempts at being unique and I appreciate that. The art style and the link ups and the transition into appearing as if it's a live service game. The new deals with youth culture. God, I'm aging myself so much already. <laughs> you know, 
collaborating with ASAP Rocky and Palace Clothing and all that kind of stuff is a really unique direction. I do think that was a good call. But I really don't see where Criterion can kind of go from here. I imagine that they'll release another patch, maybe. And then that's it. And the fact that it appears that a large amount of the community has just stopped playing this game and has gone back to playing the retro games already kind of tells me that everybody finished the story mode and tried the online mode a couple of times and just nothing it just didn't hit hit them right where they're like okay fine i honestly do feel that the going to next gen only really hurt them because if they made this more open to they would have needed to have the foresight to know that playstation 5 and xbox series x were going to be highly 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 limited in supply and because of that there just wasn't the need want or desire to pick up this game because nobody had the consoles yet two years after the pandemic so i think that there are a lot of little decisions that when added together really created this this awkward place that unbound is in i don't know if i'll call it the diamond in the rough i know it previously i have called it the diamond in the rough but at the same time too i feel like that there are a lot of things that still need to be fixed that just won't so i wish i had a lot better things to say about unbound but just the bugginess of the game I tried to get wheel support to work for 30 minutes before the recording and then it just never did or it just had some bugs with that. I mean, the graphical issues that we've been seeing throughout this recording, the lack of a roadmap, the lack of communication, the lack of marketing, the conflict that we have with the executives only wanting to make it a six month game and the developers still continuing to update it, but making a big deal out of adding a couple of cars in a game mode that should have been here on launch. It makes me feel a little bit sad because this is a decent game. And due to a lot of weird decisions, it's not going to be remembered well, I don't think. So six months after the fact, clickbait time. In my opinion, Need for Speed Unbound is dead, but it's been dead for three months. Will I continue to play this game? Now that I'm done with Forza... <laughs> now that I'm done with Forza Horizon 5, and now that I'm done with the car list in Gran Turismo 7, I think I might play this a little bit more, just because it's been so long since I've played it before. Will I pick it up again when they release uh, Volume 4? I hope they release a Volume 4. But yeah, I probably would. I'll probably make a video on that, but... Let me know down in the comment section below how right or how wrong my opinions are. Let me know what your opinions are on this topic. If you guys are still actively playing Need for Speed Unbound, or if you have gone away and just hopefully waited for Forza Motorsport or Test Drive Unlimited Solar Crown, or if you guys are hyped for the Cruise Motor Fest. So again, let me know all of your guys' comments and thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, of course, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell for more content to be released on Fridays at 10 a.m. Central Time. Of course, my name's Matt, and I hope you guys have a great day today. Take care. Bye.